Hi there. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different and I think it's going to take a little bit longer than uh, what I would normally do. Um, today I'm going to talk about what I see as the fundamental problem of knowledge work or, or really um, any kind of work in the modern age where we're having to deal with large amounts of information, trying to make decisions about what to do with all of the incoming information. Now, it's a misconception to think that the more incoming information you have, the better of a scenario that is. It actually makes things a lot more difficult when you have a really high volume of information coming in. We, we don't have the bandwidth to really deal with all of that information. So today I'm going to try and talk you through the way that I think about personal information management, uh, what the objective of managing that information is, and some of the tools that uh, I use as part of my process. I also think it's really important to note that this is something that's constantly evolving for me. So in the last few weeks, I've made some changes to how I think about managing information in my temporary notes. And so I'm, I'm doing a bit of a reshuffle um, with respect to those notes. Um, and maybe I'll mention that a little bit later. Okay, so I think the, as I said, the fundamental problem of knowledge work in, in the modern age is that there's an enormous amount of information. And how do we make decisions about what information to pay attention to? I think there's a lot of evidence that your attention is the most valuable resource that you have, especially as a knowledge worker. And the idea that we should be um, scattering our attention far and wide, depending on which notification pops up at this moment, I think is really problematic. One of the things that's really important as a knowledge worker is to be able to pay focused attention to a specific problem for extended periods of time. So I want to um, maybe start with that. Um, this is a, a permanent note, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos. A permanent note is almost the end goal of what it is to be a knowledge worker. So you, I've, I've taken incoming information from a wide variety of sources and I use those sources to capture information as a permanent note. Now a permanent note, the way that I think about it, is something that's going to be relevant for me um, in 5 years, 10 years, 30 years time. Um, hence the name permanent note. This is not something that is dependent on the job that I'm doing today or even the institution that I'm working at today. Um, so these are the kinds of things that you want to be evergreen. So these are what I've um, articulated as the principles of my personal learning environment. Um, and you can see one of the most important things that I've highlighted here is that systems and routines are more important than tools. So I want to make sure that the principles of my personal learning environment or my personal information management system um, are more important than whatever tools I'm using today. Because tools can change. Um, you know, Maybe the tool that I'm using today gets uh, sold by a company and they close it down and I need to shift my workflow into something else. Now, if all of your work is premised on a, a workflow or a structure that's determined by the tool, then you're going to find that you have to uh, reconfigure your entire workflow, your process. Whereas if you start with the process and decide what it is that's important to you and then try to shift that into a tool that has the affordances that allow you to work in ways that are meaningful to you, then it's, it's relatively trivial to swap out the tools. Okay, so my guiding principles for a personal learning environment, or maybe before I get there, I should also say that uh, for me, a knowledge worker is someone who converts information into something that's valuable. So information really is the raw material of knowledge work. Um, and so I think it's really important to be able to have a workflow that um, enables you to funnel the uh, amount of incoming information from the world, funnel it, and to then aggregate it, collect it, process it, and then to create something meaningful from that information. And I've written that as, um, you know, these four principles. It's information filtering, capturing, processing, and sharing. Uh, information filtering really is um, just about improving the signal-to-noise ratio. So I'll give some examples of some of the tools that I use to do that. Then information capture is about recognizing what information is worth paying attention to and storing it for later. Information processing, um, 
that's about uh, working with the information to create personally meaningful knowledge. So uh, knowledge is personally constructed. Um, and so how we work with information um, says a lot about the kind of knowledge that, that we develop uh, personally. And then information sharing is about creating value and sharing what you've learned with others. All right, so to start off with, um, I'll give some examples of how I think about information filtering. So I'm just going to look at three main sources, uh, my email, Twitter, and my feed reader. Now you could include LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, um, journal articles, you know, whatever. It, it doesn't really matter, but the principle is that there's an enormous amount of information out there and all of it is uh, asking for our attention. Now, how do we pay attention? How do we decide what resources to pay attention to? So I would say that for me, there are four main kinds of information that I want to pay attention to. Um, there's uh, news and uh, entertainment, uh, learning and admin. So what I'm going to be doing now is talking about how to filter information. So one of the main ways to filter information is on deciding who gets access to your inbox. So you really want to narrow down the amount of incoming information to only that which is uh, really important, what's kind of high value information. And you can do that by filtering people that have access to your inbox. So it's relatively easy to block newsletters or unsubscribe from newsletters, to block people who are emailing you, um, just kind of doing those cold calls, you know, submit to this predatory journal or whatever. So when it comes to email, you really want to narrow down the number of people who um, are showing up in your email. The other way that you can filter information is on deciding who to follow. So there's going to be an enormous amount of information that's split between news, learning and entertainment. Now, maybe that isn't such a big deal, but if I'm in a kind of work mode, then all the entertainment and the news type information is going to be really distracting. So there's not a whole lot that you can do about that at the moment. What, what I try to do is I try to look at tweets and then make decisions in the moment about where I need to filter that information to. And I'll come back to that um, in a little bit. And then the last example that I'm giving is just using an RSS feed reader. So rather than relying on something like Twitter to make decisions about what news um, is going to be presented to you, you can subscribe to an RSS feeds from an RSS feed from uh, blogs, news sites, and uh, then you're going to get everything from from that site. So there's no algorithm that's going to make a decision about what information to present to you based on uh, you know what is trending at the moment. So everything that's published in these um, channels is going to show up in my uh, feed reader. So that's a few ways that you can filter incoming information. It's really paying attention to what sources are giving you the highest value information um, consistently. Obviously, not every source is going to be giving you high value information all the time with 100% fidelity. But you know, you want to find sources where um, most of what's showing up in your feed is going to be relevant, interesting or useful. Okay, so let's go back. And now we're going to talk about this next part. We've talked about information filtering. Um, and that's about improving the signal to noise ratio. So that's about how do I make sure that I get as much high value information um, appearing in front of me, um, whether it's uh, news, entertainment or learning, um, how do I make sure that uh, the bulk of that is going to be high value rather than low value information? So then we move to information capture. That's uh, now you've decided what information is worth paying attention to and now you're going to capture it for later reference. So if we use this example of uh, the Farnham Street newsletter, I went through this a little bit earlier and I decided that this is the piece of information that really stands out for me. The rest of it is kind of interesting, but nothing that I really want to think about or, or remember for later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that um, and then go to Joplin. So Joplin is a, um, a note-taking application that I use for my temporary notes. I've talked about that in one of my previous videos. You can install this plugin in Firefox. It, uh, you can get it for all the browsers. And so what I'm going to do is I've made a selection. I'm going to go here. I'm going to say clip the selection and I'm going to choose where I want this to go. Now the way that I've set up Joplin is that I've got a folder for my personal learning environment. 
And this is a small enough piece of information that I can integrate that straight into my um, uh, permanent notes, which is what this personal learning environment folder is for. So I make sure that the right folder is selected and I'm going to say clip selection. It pulls out the title, I confirm. All right, and now I can actually delete this email. So there's no point in keeping it around. Um, this is another newsletter, um, rich article level metadata. Metadata is something that I'm thinking about a lot at the moment. So this is probably something that I want to pay more attention to. Now the difference is that when I say, yeah, read full post, I'm not going to be reading through this full post right now. Uh, this is something that I know is probably going to be interesting. It's probably something that I'm going to want to learn from. But this isn't something that I'm going to read through right now. There's quite a lot of content here. Um, so in order to make a decision about whether or not I want to extract any of this information, I actually need to pay attention to it um, at a later stage when I have time. So now I've got a choice. I either need to save this into a read it later service like Pocket, or if I'm fairly convinced that this is going to be something I want to uh, process, then I'm going to save it directly into Zotero. Zotero is my reference manager for sources that I want to bookmark, um, that I, I want to remember. I want it to be part of my library. If I'm not really sure whether or not this has got information that I want to capture for the long term, then I'm going to save it to Pocket. Pocket is a read it later service that you can subscribe to. It's uh, got a free tier. Um, I did pay for it at one point, but I uh, decided that I didn't really get enough value from what I was paying for. So now I've just reverted to the free service. Now, I'm not 100% sure that there's going to be anything in here that I want to remember for the long term. So I'm going to save it to Pocket. All right, so moving on to Twitter. Um, I had a quick look at this earlier. Um, I was just going through my feed um, and this one uh, stood out for me. This looks like something that I want to uh, definitely look at in more detail a little bit later. So remember, we've done filtering. Um, this guy, Enrico Coyera, um, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, I know that he's someone who is, he's almost always sharing things that I find interesting. So, you know, straight away I pay attention when I see his name come up. He's linked to this Lancet article. So this is an example where I've filtered information from Twitter by deciding who I'm going to be paying attention to. This has, this has shown up in my feed. I look at the article. What if the health system could think I'm sold? I know that this is something I want to pay attention to in more depth. And this is going to go into my Zotero inbox. So I've got the Zotero plugin installed in my browser. Click up there. I don't want it to go into my library. I want it to go into my Zotero inbox. So Terra's told me it wasn't able to download the full text PDF, obviously, because I'm not subscribed to the Lancet, but that's fine. That's not a problem at the moment. Let's go to my inbox and you can see here it is, the Cognitive Health System by Coera. Uh, there's the PubMed entry. So this is in my inbox. I've now captured this piece of information for later review and analysis. So I can tag it if I want to. I'm fairly sure that this is something that I'm going to want to spend a lot more time on. So now that I'm looking at uh, my feed reader, you can see that uh, this is an article that I think um, may be useful. Um, I open it up, have a quick look at it. So this seems like something I might want to pay attention to. So I'm going to save it to pocket. And here you see it's in pocket, and so I can read that a little bit later. If I decide that this is something that I want to process um, and kind of really dig into in a little bit more depth, then um, I'll open the original source and put it into Zotero, into my inbox. And now this information is captured in a place where I recognize that it's something I want to process, pay attention to in a lot more detail. All right, so that's information capture. So as you can see, I've filtered information by deciding who I'm going to be paying attention to. I've captured information that I think is worth paying, to, paying attention to, whether that's news, entertainment, or learning. 
Um, let's just have a look at Pocket, just to give an example of the kinds of information that um, I typically tend to capture. So if we go look to the top of Pocket now, you'll see here is this in pursuit of rich article level metadata. If I want to, I can tag it with something like journal. So now if I've got a day set aside for working on the Open Physio Journal, I can come into Pocket and I can say, show me everything I've saved over the last week related to the journal. Um, maybe I can also add something like metadata. Um, and then I'll save that. If I decide that um, I read this in Pocket and I do most of my reading on, on mobile, um, if I read this and I think, you know what, this actually really is uh, really valuable, I want to process this information. Then I'm going to view the original and save it into um, Zotero, which is where I do the next level of information management, which is processing. So let's add this article to Zotero. All right, so we've gotten up to information capture. You've seen that depending on what kind of information it is and depending on what I'm actually working on at the moment, I'm either going to capture it into an inbox in um, Zotero for later processing, into Joplin for uh, processing at a different level. Maybe I want to move it straight into my um, permanent notes. Um, or maybe I just don't know what I want to do with it. I know that it's something I want to look at in a little bit more detail and so I just save it into my Joplin inbox. Now we move to information processing. Now I do most of my information processing in Zotero. And so let's look at this article, uh, this web page um, that I've just saved. I use a service called Hypothesis. So I'm going to turn that on in the browser. You'll see it opens up a little navigation uh, side panel here. Uh, you can see that I'm logged in. Uh, there's no annotations in this group. So what I'll do now is I'll start working through this article and I'm not going to read the whole thing now, I'm, I'm just making a demonstration. Um, so so this, this jumps out at me. Journals need to have machine readable metadata that's clean, consistent and as interoperable as possible. I think that's definitely something I want to capture. So when you highlight that using Hypothesis, you can either annotate it or highlight it. So I like to think that when I'm highlighting text, I'm actually part of a conversation with the author of the, um, the article. So I should always have some kind of a response, um, whether it's a question or whether that's linking to something else that um, this piece of text reminds me of. Um, so I might say, um, what uh, WordPress plugins enable um, structured metadata, say provide structured metadata functionality for Open Physio. I'm going to say it's the journal metadata data. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work through this whole article making um, annotations. Persistent identifiers beyond uh, the DOI. Hmm, that's interesting. I'm only really familiar with the DOI. So um, research other persistent identifiers besides DOI. DOI, I'll say journal as well, post. Um, so anyway, let's, uh, for the sake of this example, um, I'm going to highlight this information. Now, the, the one thing that I wish that I could do um, better with uh, Hypothesis is extract this information as plain text or in Markdown. Um, at the moment, I can only copy paste or copy like that. Then I go to Zotero add a new note, and I paste this information in. Um, you see you've got to do a little bit of editing, which is not great. Let 
my notes. Um, I might want to add some tags, metadata, journal. I'll also say that this is an article I've read. Um, it mentions Crossref, it mentions DOI, it mentions personal identifiers, persistent identifiers. Um, okay, so um, another example of information processing. Um, let's just go have a look at uh, this um, PDF, uh, this essay that I read yesterday. It's called The Cognitive Style of PowerPoint by Edward Tufte. If I open it, it opens up the PDF. You can see that these are all of the notes that I made yesterday. So they're all highlighted. Then I extracted all of these as uh, this list of annotations. And what I'll do as part of my um, information processing is I'll work through this note and convert this information into permanent notes. Right, so that's the last step of my information processing is to add information from the, um, for either from uh, Joplin or from Pocket or from uh, Zotero into a, um, into a permanent note. Um, and I'm not going to talk about that in too much detail. I do really want to spend a lot of time talking about permanent notes because I think it's quite an important part of personal information management. Um, it's really an, an important part of my own workflow. Um, but it's not really something that I feel like I can cover lightly. So um, at some point in the future, I'm going to do another video on um, on, on building a, um, a repository of permanent or evergreen notes. Um, so for now, let's just say that after information processing, we uh, we create permanent notes. Um, all right, so that's the, the last aspect of information processing is creating permanent notes. And so now the last principle of my personal learning environment is about information sharing. And this is about uh, what Stephen Downs calls feeding forward. So it's about uh, remixing information that uh, you've collated um, or aggregated from a variety of sources. It's about um, creating personally meaningful knowledge from that information and then sharing that knowledge through a variety of different platforms. So for me, what I'm going to show you is Visual Studio Code. So what I would do now is I would take information from my permanent notes and use that to produce an output that I think helps me to be a better knowledge worker. So if you remember right at the very beginning, I talked about this idea of a knowledge worker as being someone who converts information into something that's valuable. Now the value that you create might be as part of a conference presentation. And if that's the case, you can see here and under presentations, um, this was a presentation that I gave at the ENFE conference. You, maybe I'm working on a learning to learn newsletter. I might be writing a blog post. Um, these are all uh, draft blog posts that I'm working on. It could be a journal article something that's in progress. So these are articles that I have in progress. The end point of this information flow from uh, uh, filtering through capture, through processing, is sharing. Um, I think it's really important as, as knowledge workers um, that we share what we've learned um, as part of creating value for our communities. There are a few other principles that um, I have with respect to personal information management or my personal learning environment about reducing the number of steps required to get things done. I had a lot more tools that I was working with and I've slowly narrowed that down to um, have it as, as few tools as possible to move information through my system, reduce the transaction costs of engaging in productive behavior. I think that's another really important principle. So if it's really difficult to move information through your personal learning environment, you're probably not going to do it with as much fidelity as you could um, purely because it's so difficult to move that information around. This is why plain text is probably a good idea to work with um, because once something is in plain text, it's relatively easy to move it between systems. All right, so I hope that this has been useful. As I said, it's been a little bit longer than usual, but um, I thought it was important to try and give a reasonably broad overview of how I think about managing information as a knowledge worker. 
If you think that this has been useful, I'd really like to hear from you in the comments. Uh, if you have your own system for managing information, feel free to share that as well. Um, I, I always like to uh, tweak my system um, if, if I can learn something useful from other people. If you've made it this far, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. See you soon. Bye.